Hi, this is Mr. Doro. Today we're going to be talking about mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometry. It's the most common type of stoichiometry problem that you'll see. It's where you're given grams of one substance in a chemical reaction, like this, 29.1 grams, and you might be asked to find the grams of any other substance in that chemical reaction. So you might want to find how many grams of AX would be needed to react with that, or how many grams of AY it would produce, or BX it would produce produce. So we're going to try to make a proper action line converting from mass of one substance to the mass of another. In mass to mass stoichiometry you'll be given the mass of something, we'll just say x, and you're asked to find the mass of something else in the chemical reaction. And so this is the way the problem is going to look for each one. Every action line that you're going to do is going to look this way. It will have what you're given which is the grams of x starting out your action line then you're going to change that grams of x to moles of x. Now where do you get the numbers for that? Well this number right here is going to be a 1 because it is the molar mass. This number will be the molar mass from the periodic table. And so I'm going to put from the PT, periodic table. That's just to change it over to moles because we can't go from right from mass of x to mass of y. We have to do a mole to mole ratio. And so continuing on here then, we're going to keep on going and go then moles of x. And now we can switch over using the balanced equation to moles of y. Those numbers come from the balanced equation. That's, those are the coefficients from the balanced equation. Now we switched over to moles of y. Now everything we do from here on will be dealing with y. And so we keep on going right here. This is going to be moles of y and then grams of y and this is going to be a 1 in front of the moles because it's the molar mass and the grams is the molar mass again that says mm if you can't read it and again that is from the periodic table so here's a problem that we have how many grams of oxygen are needed to react with sufficient amounts of propane to produce 193 grams of carbon dioxide remember we need to start with our balanced chemical equation. That's what I'm going to do right now. So I have my balanced chemical equation here now. Now I have to start with what I'm given in the problem. What I'm given in the problem is 193 grams of carbon dioxide. So that's what I'll start my action line with. 193 grams of CO2, carbon dioxide. And then I gotta find out what am I asked to find? Well I'm asked to find grams of oxygen. I can't go right from grams of carbon dioxide to grams of oxygen, so I have to go from change my grams of carbon dioxide to moles of carbon dioxide, CO2, and grams of CO2. And when I do that, now I use my molar mass from the periodic table. My molar mass is 44.01 for grams of carbon dioxide, that's for every one mole. And then I continue on, I can now go from moles of CO2, copy down, to moles of wherever I wanted to go, oxygen. I can't go directly from moles to grams, this is a mole to mole ratio. And I get these numbers from my balanced equation. In front of the CO2, I've got a 3, and so I'm going to put that 3 right in there. In front of my O2, I have a 5, and so that is my 5 to 3 ratio. And then continuing on now, I go from moles, I've switched over to O2 now, moles of O2 to grams of O2, and that from my uh, periodic table, I get one mole is 32.00, because each, each O is 16.00, but I have two O's right there. And now, to, in order to calculate this, all I need to do is start with this number in my calculator, multiply every number on top, hit the divide button for every number on the bottom, you plug it in, see what you get. And here's what I got in the correct scientific notation and the correct number of sig figs. I got 2.34 times 10 to the second grams of O2. Now if you're saying I got 234, well that's what I got too. I just put it in scientific notation. You really want to make sure that you have this general setup up here for mass to mass problems in your notes. Make sure you have that because that's the same setup it will follow. The X's and the Y's will change, but that's the same setup each time. So here's a doozy of a problem that you can practice. 
Uh, it says you produce you want to produce 29.6 grams of oxygen in a single replacement reaction between magnesium oxide and fluorine. How many grams of each reactant and the other product would be necessary? So what the first thing you need to do is try to write a balanced equation. So why don't you pause it and try to write one right now. Okay, hopefully you really paused it, and hopefully you got the same balanced equation that I got. Now, this is what we're starting out with, 29.6 grams of this oxygen right here. And it doesn't matter that it's a product, you have a recipe. A balanced equation is like a recipe, so we can figure out the ratios of how many grams of each other reactant and the other product that we would end up with. And so we need to start out an action line with what we're given, 29.6 grams of oxygen, 29.6 grams of O2. And I'm going to pick, first of all, we're going to go to the MgF2. We're going to go to this one right here. And so grams of O2 to one mole of O2. And you do have to write the O2 in there. 32.00 I get from the periodic table. And then moles of O2. I can now do a mole to mole ratio switching over to moles of MgF2. And when I do that, I use the coefficients from the balanced equation. One mole here, two moles right there. And now I can change my moles of MgF2 to grams of MgF2. Again, I get those from the periodic table. So one mole, and the molar mass is 62.31. I calculated it already, and then I multiply everything on top, divide everything on bottom, and the answer I get is 1.15 times 10 to the second grams of MgF2, 115. And the reason I put it in scientific notation is because it was over 100. If it's over 100 or below 1, you should put it in scientific notation. Now the next two, really, to get this one, MgO, and the F2, I really start with what I'm given again, 29.6 grams of O2 both times. 29.6 grams of O2. In fact, everything's going to look the same right up until I get to the mole to mole ratio. 32.00 grams of O2, 1 mole of O2. And then 1 mole of O2 because that's from the balanced equation. And then this is where things change. As I get to this point right here, things start to change. This bottom one will look the same way too, and then it's going to change when it gets to this point right here. You're going to go to a different one of the other things in the balanced chemical equation. I'll give you the answer so that you can check them out. The answer for this one, if, well, if you go to the F2, it is 70.3 grams of F2, and then the MgO is going to be 74.6 grams of MgO. So do those, have those done, and check them out. This picture is just for you to look at about the stoichiometric pathways. Notice that every in, anything you start with, you have to get to a mole ratio. you got to get to moles, do a mole ratio, and then moles of the other thing. This is generally what we'll do. The mass, changing it to moles, use the mole ratio to moles, and then back to mass again. But we could do gas volume or molar concentration. But mo generally, it's this thing, but the mole ratio is the key point to the central of stoichiometric pathways. All right, well, now it's your turn to try one. Uh, 20 grams of iron reacts with an abundance of oxygen. That abundance of oxygen just means that you have plenty of oxygen, so you don't have to worry about running out of that. In a synthesis reaction, I want to know how many grams of iron 3 oxide would, would be formed. And so this is a skeleton equation. You have to balance it first. Now, when you get done, your answer, if you did it right, should end up at 28.6 grams of Fe2O3. And now if you're not getting that right answer, then it's probably the um, the molar mass of the Fe2O3. And so check out your molar mass and see if it's 159.7. Don't just use mine. You do it and see if you actually get that. And here's one more problem for you to try. This one's going to involve two action lines. You're going to be starting out with 9.3 grams. This is a skeleton equation again, so you're going to have to balance it. But if I say that I had 9.3 grams of aluminum and it completely reacts, that means that you have enough of this CuCl2, whatever it is, you have enough of it to react. And you could figure out how much you would need too. But my question is, how many grams of AlCl3 
and how many grams of copper are you going to form? Balance the equation first. When you get done with the problem, hopefully your answer ends up to be 46 grams of AlCl3, and that's the correct number of sig figs, and then 33 grams of Cu. If you say you don't know how to set it up, go back and look at your notes and see the sample one that you set up. It's going to follow that same pattern. So have it all set up. See if you can get that same answer. If you're not, if you got it all set up right, but you're not getting the same answer, check your molar masses. Mass-to-mass -mass stoichiometry is something you can do. So do it. Have a great day. Bye-bye.